So I want to talk about the four source hypothesis. And just a quick reminder, what the four source hypothesis is, is a solution, if you will, um, a solution um, to the synoptic problem. And if you remember, let's write this real quick, synoptic problem. And I like to put problem in air quotes or in quotes because I don't think it's really a problem. What I think it is is the reality of the synoptic gospels. It becomes a problem if you think that each of the gospels themselves are all depicting what actually happened. And that that, remember we've talked about this, that kind of way of looking at the Gospels comes out of more, much more of a modern understanding of the Gospels as biographies instead of an ancient understanding of the Gospels as biographies. So it isn't really a problem. What it is, the synoptic problem itself, if you remember, is that question of how do we explain both the significant similarities between the synoptic gospels and these really interesting differences that they have amongst each other or from each other, okay? So the four source hypothesis is the solution to that. And this is the one that most scholars um, will say is, is the best understanding or the best way to make sense of the synoptic gospels. Okay, now remember the synoptic gospels, there are three, right? Mark, Matthew, and Luke. So we have three gospels that we're talking about trying to understand um, trying to understand why it is that they are all so similar and why they have these differences among themselves. Okay, Mark, I'm just going to call it Matthew, Matt for now, and Luke. So we're talking about four sources that we think of as going into these three Gospels. So the Gospels themselves are these three and there are four sources. So what are those four sources? Well, actually, one of the sources is Mark itself. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a this with it also, right? Put a little, little ellipsis around a source, right? Because, as you noted in the reading, um, all but 18 verses of the Gospel of Mark show up in one or both of Matthew and Luke. So it's like Mark wrote his first and a couple decades pass and Matthew and Luke are coming along and they just want to add a little flair, as we've discussed, right, in the essences of Jesus. They each have a little different thing they want to say, but they're starting with the basic story and they're adding to it in some various ways. So Mark is a source for Matthew and for Luke. Do you see what I'm saying there? Okay, then we've noticed there are a group of stories that Matthew and Luke have in common, though they sometimes use different endings worth thinking about, right? Um, does that mean those two, those stories happen two or three different times? Probably not, but there's a basic story there that each gospel writer is working with. Whatever the case, we've noticed that they have quite a few stories in common that do not show up in Mark. So uh, we Biblical scholars are so clever with our names. Um, the, we call it Q, which is the first letter of the German word Kella, which means source, because we're so clever like that. Um, so Q is a source for Luke and for Matthew. By definition, Q does not show up in Mark, right? Then at the end of the at the end of the day, we, we've noticed that there are a handful of stories that only show up in Matthew. They don't show up in Mark or Luke or even in John. Um, and the same goes for Luke. There are a handful of stories, right? So to give just a couple quick examples, Matthew has the um, the wise men visiting Jesus somewhere around his second year, right? In that whole birth story, and we and Matthew is the one that has Joseph taking the Mary and the child into Egypt, right? Um, Luke, in the birth narrative, is the one that has the shepherds coming to, to visit Jesus. And Luke is the one that has the, the angel visiting Mary. And Luke, you know, all those different stories that are just at the beginning of Luke, for instance. Also, all the stories about the lost coin, um, the prodigal son, uh, Zacchaeus, all these things focusing on finances are particular to Luke. So where did these, where do they get these stories? Um, there is a source of some sort. Um, that that these two gospel writers used. And so I'm going to, oops, putting a little ellipsis, not a elliptic. Mm, 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 mm. Doing this with it, right? And we'll do this with it, right? 
so to show that these are sources. Um, and again, just a quick reference or quick bit on sources themselves. When we talk about sources, what do I mean, right? Do I mean that there is a, a book of these stories that someone knew about? No. And specifically, probably not. It's possible, but probably not. We're probably talking about um, someone who's passed through town and who knows or has been passing along these stories associated with Jesus. In some way, shape, or form, there are stories out there that these gospel writers are working with. So the four sources themselves are Mark, Kella, L, and M that, that work together in various ways to give us the three synoptic gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. 